Hi, I'm Fish and Ahita. I am a Silver Road Guide and an arena battler, and I'm here to help you learn how to battle like a pro. Um, all those arena, Silver Arena battlers have been learning battling for a year now, and they've learned a lot of really cool tips and strategies that you can now learn too to help you to build that ranking, uh, rise up to level seven and beyond. Uh, there's some really simple things too, stuff that you can try immediately. Um, there are eight of them. Uh, here we go. <laughs> Actually, okay. Let me take that back. Not all of them are things that you can put into effect immediately because, uh, to, just as an example, the first tip I've got here is there is no optimal answer. <laughs> um, look, let me explain. Uh, with raids, there is a, a mathematically correct Pokemon to use, right? The raid boss comes out, there is one Pokemon that is the best in terms of like DPS damage per second. Um, the best way to do the raid is to have uh, a whole bunch of those Pokemon at 100 IV, maxed out to level 40, and then just keep sending that Pokemon in uh, over and over again until the enemy faints. Um, that's not how it works with trainer battles. It's more of a chess match with trainer battles, right? Um, there's like, there is the best Pokemon, and then there's things that counter the best Pokemon, and then there's things that counter those Pokemon as well, and so on. There's never one specific way you can win. I come across a lot of people who, uh, who who keep telling others, you know, just use these three Pokemon, and you'll and you'll win. It doesn't work like that. You've also got to know how to use them. Just as an example, um, this is PVPoke.com. This is the just absolute best resource you can have uh, for trainer battles, right? And they rank uh, Altaria, Registeel, and Deoxys Defense as the three best Pokemon in the Great League, right? So if you're gonna break everything down mathematically, those three come out on top. So let's put them into a team builder here and rate them. And uh, let's just scroll down to here. Uh, these are the Pokemon that will do mathematically the best against that team, right? So, Azumarill. Anyone with Azumarill is gonna give an Altaria, Registeel, Deoxys team a hard time. Uh, Registeel and Altaria, funnily enough, uh, are in there. Then you go further down, you got Whiskash, you got Alolan Marowak, you have got Mew, Regirock, Clefable is giving them a hard time. Gliscor, Blastoise even. Uh, so if I brought yeah, like, if you brought those top three Pokemon, and I brought along a Blastoise, you're already on the back foot. And then if I try and bring a Blastoise, and you're like, oh, well, yeah, I know what to bring now, uh, a Venusaur. I'm now in trouble. Um, there, there's no there's no one optimal way. Like, there, it's everything's everything loses to something else. And even then, these big pink Xs are a hard loss. Like, not no matter what you do, you're probably going to lose. These smaller pink X's are close losses, meaning if, say, so this is uh, Marowak versus Deoxys, Deoxys does lose that, but if Deoxys had a bit of an energy lead, it had, um, it had been switched in, gotten up a few counters, um, and then the opponent came in with a Marowak, Deoxys is already almost at a rock slide and the rock slide's gonna take out the Marowak. So then that flips the matchup over. Even though you might have the mathematically best team, just a small thing like uh, when you use your shields, when you uh, fire off your charge moves, all that can flip it all over, right? So don't worry about what you're using as much as about how to use it. That is a very important thing to get your head around as hard as it may be. Tip number two, check your team for weaknesses. This one's a much simpler one. Um, I've got a team here that is, uh, let's go this one here, uh, Azumarill, Registeel, and Whiskash. Uh, now, if I'm going into a battle and I'm thinking, what, you know, are three really good Pokemon that I want to use? Um, Azumarill, Registeel, Whiskash, all really good. Um, but, if I were to put them all in a team together, someone brings a uh, Meganium, they're gonna wreck me, you know? Uh, any grass Pokemon is gonna give me a lot of trouble. Uh, Meganium especially because it's got Earthquake as well to take on the Registeel. But 
it, this one is just a super super simple one to to start doing which is just do a quick mental check uh, of the team that you want to use to see if there's any like one type or a specific Pokemon that you see a lot that could give your team trouble um, it'll save you a lot of time and frustration down the track tip number three IVs only make a really small difference. Um, there is, we all get so hung up on the best IVs. Um, with raids, everyone's going for a hundo. Everyone wants a hundo. No one cares if it's not a hundo. Um, it's, again, it's different with trainer battles. Like, there's so much more going on. The IVs don't mean everything. Like, uh, I've got this example here to illustrate. If I can bring it up, here we go. Um, this is a Haunter versus a Lola Marowak with the optimal IVs for both, right? And if we punch that battle in, this is, you know, Shadow Claw, Shadow Claw, Shadow Punch, which is being shielded, and then a Bone Club's being shielded, and then another Shadow Punch, and the Marowak faints. Haunter wins with a battle rating of 683. All these battle ratings are out of 1,000. Uh, anything higher than 500 is a win and lower than 500 is a loss. So Haunter's winning pretty comfortably there. It's a, it's a solid win. Now, that's with the optimal IVs, the best possible PvP IVs you can have in the Great League. If we change that to say 15, whoops, um, 15, 0, 0. Hopefully you know by now that um, with PvP IVs, it's, you generally want the lowest attack possible and the highest defense and, and HP. We've gone the opposite direction now, we've flipped that over and to bring it further up to Great League level, I think we have to go level 30, there we go. And battle again. And there's not much difference there. You're still, you're still firing off two Shadow Punches. Um, Still the same, yeah, Shadow Clawing up until you get up to the Shadow Punch. They're getting off one Bone Club, and yeah, it's it's pretty much the same. The only difference is I think that's five less HP that you're leaving the battle with. So what to take away from that is that if you don't have the best uh, PvP IVs for a Pokemon that you want to use, doesn't matter. Go for it. Um, you'll be able to overcome bad IVs with superior battling skills. Uh, now, <laughs> I say that, you want to know what the superior battling skills are, don't you? So I have uh, enlisted the help for the rest of these tips of a, a friend of mine called Wilbert. He is uh, one of the best battlers in uh, South Australia, where I'm from. Um, and uh, we, we've just uh, done a few dummy battles to help uh, describe the, the next few tips. The first one is safe switching. Now, uh, you might want to rewind and uh, re-watch some of these clips to, to get the hang of it. Uh, this is safe switching. Now, um, if you lose the lead matchup like I have with this Haunter versus Sableye, um, you can try and switch out of that, but then whatever you switch into is locked, right? You can't take it out of there for a whole minute. Uh, so that will give your opponent the opportunity to bring in something that hard counters what you've done, what you've brought in, right? So in this example here, uh, I've brought in Swampert and eventually Wilbert brings in the Tropius and I am not going to win this. No matter what I do, I don't have any moves that are going to even tickle the Tropius and I'm just going to go down. Instead, you want to switch into a Pokemon that is either really tanky, that can take a lot of hits, or that uh, has moves that will hit back hard against the Pokemon that they would normally be countered with. So here I've used an Umbreon. Wilbert's still got the same Tropius as before, but this time I'm taking a lot more hits. I'm just taking those Leaf Blades like a champ and firing off my own Dark Pulses. I'm winning this matchup now. Eventually, my uh, opponent has to use a shield as well. Spoiler alert. But uh, yeah, the point is that 
because I've picked a, a safer switch, something that's not going to get hard counted by a lot, um, I've, I've been able to at least gain some ground back in that matchup. Another example that I see a lot is bringing in a zoom rule, uh, as your safe switch option because it's got ice beam. So if someone comes at you with a grass Pokemon, it can still give them a lot of trouble with the ice beam. Like, you might force them to at least burn shields, even if you don't, you know, win the matchup, you might make them burn their shields, which is gonna come in super handy down the track later. Tip number five is spammy charge moves. Again, with raids. It helps to have just those really, those one bar nuclear charge moves that you're gonna fire off once and it's just gonna take a whole bunch of damage off. That's not the case with trainer battles. Here in this example, I'm using an Azumarill with Hydro Pump. The Hydro Pump is just taking too long to charge up. And so the Skarmory is getting all the sky attacks off. I'm having to use my shields. And in the end, it's not even going to be enough because I'm not going to have enough energy to get to a final Hydro Pump to take out the Skarmory. I almost did. Almost got it. But it didn't happen. So instead, what about a Swampert with Hydro Cannon? Hydro Cannon charges a lot quicker, still does a lot of damage, and you've got to be mindful of uh, is your quick uh, charging charge move also going to do a good amount of damage for how quick it is. But once you've got that satisfied, that is going to be a much better move to use. You can see I'm now getting to the Hydro Cannon before Skarmory is getting to the Sky Attacks, and that has flipped the matchup over. I don't even need to shield this one. I take it out with one more mud shot. Perfect. So you see that a lot in Ultra League with uh, and Master League with Giratina having uh, Dragon Breath, Dragon Claw. Uh, those Dragon Claws just charge so fast. Um, uh, Whiskash with Mud Shot, Mud Bomb that just just fires away at you so fast, and you have to make decisions. Like, am I going to use a shield? Am I going to try and take this? You know, uh, take this without fainting. So yeah, spammy charge moves. Whatever you do, have a spammy charge move on your Pokemon. While we are on the topic of moves, tip six is coverage moves. Now, again, you might want to rewind this because it goes real fast. Basically, you want, if the Pokemon you're, you want to use has the option of having a move that will take out its counters, then that is an, a really handy uh, move to have. So in this example, my opponent has brought out Altaria to try and counter my Medicham, and it got to, I think, one Sky Attack, which I was able to shield, but then I took it out with a couple of Ice Punches. Altaria, double weak to Ice, obviously. So having that Ice Punch there enabled me to fight back at something that would have otherwise taken me out. And so that kind of takes it away from the, the nothing you can do about it, rock, paper, scissors type uh, meta, and brings it more into that chess game that I was talking about. Uh, the fact that, you know, you can think, uh, if I bring this Pokemon, I'm gonna be able to take out these Pokemon, but then also, if my opponent comes at me with a counter, I've got this to kind of uh, fix that, to, to fight back against that. So coverage moves. Uh, one of the most important things for being a good battler is having that second move that provides coverage. Here's another option though. Shield baiting. Tip number seven, shield baiting. Now, um, I've got a Driplin versus a Lolan Marowak here. Um, the Alolan Marowak is going to go straight Shadow Ball, right? Because obviously Bone Club is going to do bugger all damage to the Driftblim. Driftblim, Driftblim is half flying. So Bone Club is going to be double resisted and it's a weak move to begin with. So I'm trying to go straight Shadow Ball, but my opponent and his Driftblim is 
getting to his Shadow Balls first. So that puts me in a losing situation. I run out of shields before he does, and I take a Shadow Ball to the face before he can. But, what happens if I build up enough energy to get to a Shadow Ball, and then make him think that I'm going to use it, while using the lesser energy charge move instead? So I've used Bone Club, my opponent thinks that I'm going to fire a Shadow Ball, and so uses the shield. I fire the Bone Club, doesn't use as much energy, and now I have energy left over to get to another Shadow Ball quicker. You can see I baited again a second time, used up the second shield, and now I'm free to use that Shadow Ball. So, shield baiting, it's when you build up enough energy to get to the bigger charge move, but then using the lesser charge move instead to try and bait them into using a shield. Um, a lot of people do it with uh, Acid Spray. Acid Spray does not do much damage at all, but it's a lower energy charge move than what, say, their other charge move might be, so they might use that to, to then try and coax out that shield and lower your defense. Um, Dragon Claw might be another one. With, uh, with Charizard, uh, Charizard has Blast Burn, which is going to wreck some Mons, but then sometimes you can build up enough energy for a Blast Burn, and then just use Dragon Claw instead. Make them use that shield for no reason. Uh, shield baiting is a big, big part of trainer battles. Um, one caveat to that is that it can go wrong. Like, if I had used the Bone Club there, and my opponent had seen it coming, and not used the shield, then I'm in a lot of trouble there, because then I have burned energy for no reason, and I'm, you know, I'm already behind, so I'm even further behind now. But uh, you know, there's, it's a, it's a risk or reward play. You know, you can, you can go for it, um, and in fact, in this situation, it's probably better to go for it because uh, you're so far behind in that matchup. If you don't get the shield bait, you're not going to win. Uh, I've got one final tip for you, and that is farming energy. In this battle, I have a Probe Pass locked in against a Skarmory, and the Skarmory is not going to tickle the Probe Pass. It can just take all the Sky Attacks at once. I haven't used any shields yet, and I just take out the Pokemon with fast moves. Um, the reason I do that is that you can store energy after the, the charge move is charged up. So even when that, that charge move lights up, you're still storing more energy that you can be used towards the next charge move, right? So I knew that I didn't need to use a charge move on Skarmory to take it out. What, what that allowed me to do is just keep on using fast moves, keep on storing up energy, and then when the Swamper comes out, I just unleash all that saved up energy onto my opponent. So I've almost taken out a Swamper with my Probo Pass. Had to use a shield each to get that low, but you know, you can see what it did there. Farming energy. The, the caveat to that is um, there, you can only store up to a, a value of 100 energy, so you've got to kind of, you can go to pvpoke.com and you can learn how much energy a certain move generates and then how much uh, it will cost to use a certain move, and then you can practice kind of, you can practice farming. You can uh, learn what happens when you try and take out your opponent using fast moves and store that energy to unleash onto the next Pokemon. Uh, that one takes a bit of, of uh, learning how to do it properly because, uh, you know, you should only do it, say, if you know your opponent can't get to another fast move, another charge move, sorry, or uh, you know that your opponent, uh, your po your own Pokemon is just such a hard wall against your opponent Pokemon that you can just, uh, you know, use those fast moves and no matter how many charge moves they get to, it's not going to hurt you. But yeah, farming energy. It's a, it's a very fundamental part of the game. 
Uh, that is it. Those are my eight tips uh, to help you to uh, learn how to be a better battler. Um, try it, practice it, watch those examples that I use over and over again to just get the hang of it. Because once you get the hang of those eight things, uh, you are going to be such a better battler. Until next time, um, I mean, watch the other videos on this channel. Uh, they are all super handy in kind of breaking down how a battle goes um, and, and helping you learn about decision making in the moment. But until next time, I will see you later. This is Fish on a Heater and build that ranking.